Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with a comparison of two really nice digital to analog converters. Uh, the first would be the Audio GD R8 MK2. The second would be the Denifrips Pontus II. Um, these are both R2R type ladder decks. Uh, the first, the Audio GD is made in China and the second, the Denifrips, is made in Singapore. Uh, the Audio GD currently sells for $1,780 US dollars and that would be directly from Audio GD and the uh, Denifrips sells for $1,800 and $20 in US dollars. That would be the current conversion from Singapore dollars. And um, like I said, these are both R2R ladder decks, and uh, R2R decks have become pretty popular lately. They have a little bit of a different sound from your uh, basic uh, Delta Sigma decks. Uh, the best way I could describe it is um, it's like comparing solid state amps to tube amps. The two amps don't measure quite as well, but they have a slightly warmer, smoother, more liquid sound, sometimes a more three-dimensional uh, sound stage. And a lot of people prefer the sound of two amps over solid-state amps, even though they don't measure as well, and it is a much older technology. And I'm kind of leaning that way lately. I've really gotten into tube amps and really like the sound. Well, anyway, I hadn't reviewed any R2R type decks until about four months ago. And I really like what I'm hearing. Um, it's kind of like, you know, the, the tube amp compared to the solid state amp. That's kind of how I would compare the R2R sound to the Delta Sigma sound. It's just a, it's a little warmer, a little richer, um, a little um, smoother, and I think once again it has a little more of a three-dimensional sound. So I'm really liking the R2R decks, and I'm really lucky to have these two at the same time and be able to compare the two. Um, getting into the two DACs, um, starting with the Audio GD, it has six sets of inputs. The, uh, the Denifrips has seven inputs, and these would be your digital inputs. And the difference is the Denifrips has one extra of the AES inputs, which is your, um, for, that's like the four pin XLR, but they both have your basics they both have two um, coaxial inputs one is an RCA type plug the other is a BNC they both have um, your optical they both have your AES they both have your I squared S they um, you know they, they have the same things but the, the Denifrips does have the one extra AES um, you can both of them you can scroll through the inputs from your front panel. Um, the um, Audio GD has three sets of analog outputs compared to only two sets on the Denifrips. They both have your standard RCA single-ended outputs. They both have your XLR balanced outputs. The one extra on the Audio GD is ACSS, which uh, basically looks like a three pin. I'm not sure if it's three pin or four pin, but it's a mini XLR plug. And it can only be used with, um, you know, other components that have the ACSS. It, it works in a different way. They call it current drive. I'm not sure of the technicalities of it. But I know that um, I do have the Audio GD Master 9. It's uh, my personal amp and it has the ACSS connection and I did uh, try that. That's what I've been using. And I think it does sound slightly better than using the XLR connections. And um, I just wanted to mention for my review, I'm uh, one of the amps I used is the Audio GD Master 9 and when hooked up to that amp I use the ACSS 
connection from the R8 and the um, balanced XLR connection from the Denifrips. So, um, as far as digital filters, the R8 I believe only has one choice. I don't think you can change the digital roll-off filters. The uh, Pontus does have two, which would be a slow roll-off or a sharp roll-off. Oversampling uh, the R8 MK2 has four choices of either off, which would be non-oversampling, or two times, four times, or eight times oversampling. Uh, the Pontus only has a choice of um, non-oversampling or oversampling, and I'm not sure what the oversampling rate is. I've not been able to find that. Uh, the Pontus does have a phase switch, which inverts the phase. Uh, the R8 does not. They both... Um, claim a signal to noise ratio of 120 decibels and I did want to mention that both of these um, the I squared S input that you can reconfigure it to uh, match up with um, you know other brands of equipment because the I squared S connection is becoming kind of popular um, the Audio GD claims a total harmonic distortion of 0.01% and the Denifrips a total harmonic distortion of 0.0025%. Uh, excuse me just a second. <clears throat> Still heating with wood even though it's um, almost the end of March. Should be out mowing grass right now. And instead, I'm uh, cutting firewood and heating my house with wood. So, anyway, the air is dry. I get thirsty pretty quick. Both of these units, um, the cases or the enclosure, the chassis, is completely made of aluminum, aluminum panels, top, bottom, front, back, um, you know, sides, everything. Um, as you can see in the photo behind me, the Audio GD is, a, is black, and that's the only color it comes in. The Denifrips, I think uh, everything I've seen is silver, but now I'm pretty sure I've seen black in the um, Aries. I'm not sure if the larger models come in black or not, but anyway, totally enclosed in aluminum. Uh, both of these are very large and very heavy. According to the websites, they both weigh in at 12 kilograms, which works out to 26.4 pounds each. Even though uh, the Denifrips is a little bit smaller, it's still very large. The Audio GD is pretty huge. Um, the Audio GD is 17 inches wide, which is your standard full size component width by 17.5 inches deep and I did want to mention that because of that being so deep by the time you plug XLR plugs into the back of that you have to have a shelf about 20 inches deep I actually ran into a problem my shelf was 18 inches deep and I had to put spacers behind my shelf and move it out a couple inches from the wall to have room to plug in my wires to the back of this uh, DAC and I've actually heard from a few other people make comments about Audio GD equipment being so deep that they had to get a new shelf or, you know, whatever because of it being so deep. You're not going to put this on a 16 or even an 18 inch shelf. Uh, it's about, and the um, R8 is about 3.2 inches tall. The Denifrips. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, but still very large at 12.6 inches wide, 13 inches deep, and uh, they say 3.2 inches tall, but it has three aluminum feet on it, and um, with the aluminum feet, I think it's about four inches tall, and that is a little unusual. I hadn't seen that before. It has two feet on the front, one on the back, but it seems pretty solid. It doesn't wobble or anything, so it's not a problem. But they do look nice. They're like a cone shape, uh, the aluminum feet on it. So anyway, uh, for reviewing these two DACs, my uh, primary input was a Cambridge Audio CD transport running e into either the optical or the coaxial inputs. I did not 
test either of these using the USB input because my only USB source was my desktop computer and these DACs are both so huge I just didn't have room to put them on my desk so um, they didn't get tested that way but um, as far as uh, amps I use the Audio GD Master 9 to test both of these. I cooked them both up at the same time. And then I also used um, the Waveborn Edelweiss 3 Preamp Plus, which has four sets of inputs, and hooked them both up to that with RCA 8 plugs because or cables because that is a single-ended amp. So I was able to test the uh, single-ended outputs of that, of both DACs through that amp, and that, that it's a OTL Type 2 amp. And then I ran the preamp outputs of that into the Waveborn Edelweiss 3 Power Amp Plus, which is a transformer coupled all-tube amp and um, with more power that can run pretty much any headphone. So both of these though, they both the plus in both of the names means one is a preamp plus headphone amp and the other is a speaker amp plus headphone amp. But both, um, I actually, I love both of them. They sound incredible. And um, the Power Amp Plus is actually my favorite headphone amp at this time. And I believe it's the most detailed, um, most, um, has the highest resolution, the best clarity of any amp I've reviewed to this time. Also has a great three-dimensional sound stage. So anyway, um, I did want to mention that when I did my initial um, first impressions video and my full review of the Audio GD uh, R8, I had uh, tried the sample rates on that when I first got it and I switched through the four different possible settings on the sample rates and even though I did hear a significant difference I couldn't really decide which I thought was the best so I ended up putting it on the eight times sampling and kind of left it that way through the reviews okay well when I um, did a direct comparison between the Audio GD and the Denifrips. Um, I kind of thought that the Denifrips was coming out on top sound wise. It, it had slightly better clarity, slightly better. Um, they sound the tone balance was very, um, very similar between the two. The sound stage was very similar, but I thought that the uh, Denifrips has had a slight advantage in clarity resolution, just sounded slightly more focused. So, and with the Denifrips, I did mess around, went back and forth from no oversampling or oversampling, and didn't hear as big a difference, And but I heard a little bit of a difference and ended up settling on, um, for most of the reviewing, the non-oversampling. But back to the Audio GD, um, I messed around with the oversampling and compared it to the Denifrips directly and came to the realization that I believe it sounds best in the non-oversampling mode. So for the rest of this review, I used the non-oversampling mode on the R8 and thought it sounded better that way. And actually, it put it extremely close to the Denifrips as far as sound. I mean, the, the two are actually very, very similar. And I had to spend hours comparing the two of these using multiple different types of music, different headphones. And headphone-wise, um, most of this review was done with either the Kennerton Rogner, and that would be the planar version which um, is their flagship closed headphone. I use also the Kennerton Thror, which is their flagship open back headphone. And then I just uh, a couple weeks ago got the ZMF, um, uh, what is it, the Atrium, their brand new headphone, which is a beautiful headphone, love it. So I had some really nice headphones to, you know, listen to these two decks and hear the differences. 
And to be honest, like I said, they're very, very close. The tone balance is almost identical. Um, they're both a little on the warm side of neutral. Um, both have a very rich, liquid sound. Just very, very pleasant to listen to. I just love both of these decks. Um, I could just listen to them for hours without any listening fatigue. They never... Neither one of them ever sounds dry or analytical or um, or thin. They they both have a lot of weight and a lot of body to the music, and just I really like both of them. Uh, they're both um, have exceptional clarity, detail, resolution. Um, just nothing lacking at all. I compared these to the. Um, the topping uh, D90 uh, ES, which is, from what I've heard, the best measuring deck out there, and it is extremely clean and detailed, but it is it has a dry sort of analytical sound compared to these two decks, and these two decks keep up with it, with the D90 as far as clarity and resolution, but they both have a definitely uh, warmer richer sound that I very much prefer. So anyway, um, and both of these decks have a um, a wide, deep, three-dimensional sound stage. So they're very similar, um, but after uh, listening just for hours on end, a lot of listening, different headphones, um, switched over, you know, to the tube amps, and I finally came up with the conclusion that I slightly prefer the Denifrips, uh, the sound. And like I said, it's very, very close. There's very little difference. But I would say the Denifrips just has a slightly more, um, a better focus to the sound. Um... I guess I could say it's uh, the clarity is just slightly better, but it's it's just... Uh, I'm not sure. It just, it's like if you were watching, you know, a, t a video on your TV or whatever, and, and one source just was just a little bit sharper in the focus, and that's kind of the difference I'm hearing between the two of these. But it's a very small difference. I'm talking a couple of percent at most. Um, you know, and it took me a long time and a lot of switching back and forth to really hear that difference. But I knew there was a slight difference, and I knew that just for some reason, I slightly preferred the Denifrips, but finding that difference, figuring out what that difference was, was really difficult. And like I said, it's because there's not that much difference in the sound. Also, um, I think the Denifrips just um, had a little bit more depth to the sound stage and maybe a little bit more of a three-dimensional holographic uh, sound to the sound stage but once again very close just slightly different um, but like I said in every other way these two decks actually sound very close to each other where some decks just sound completely different to me like the topping D90 for instance just has a completely different sound than these two decks. So I'm not one of those people that thinks all decks sound the same. I just think that these two decks sound very similar. Uh, once again, I ended up with both of these in the non-oversampling mode. Uh, playing CDs, I just think they sounded best that way. It just, um, the clarity and detail just came out a little bit better where um, in the oversampling modes, especially the uh, R8, it just, it seemed to soften the sound a little bit. It sounded clean and detailed, but it just, it sounded a little bit softer and it just seemed to lose a little bit of its sharpness and clarity. And I actually preferred the non oversampling. So, um, as far as the, um, not the sound, but the unit itself, okay, the Pontus uses six buttons on the front, not counting the power button. So power button plus six, the Audio GD uses a power button plus three. Okay, the Pontus, some of those buttons have more than one function. The Audio GD, um, you have several functions out of three buttons. 
And to be honest, I found the Audio GD a little bit confusing and it took me a little while to figure out how to, going through the different inputs is real easy, but changing the oversampling and things like that was a little more complicated. And it just, the, to me, the Pontus was a little bit easier to use. The buttons were a little more self-explanatory and I was able to figure it out without having to go to the website and watch the or you know read through the instructions of the manual you know three four times to figure it out so um, I think the controls are a little bit easier the Pontus is a little bit smaller which means you're not going to need you know a 20 inch shelf to put it on or if you are going to put it on your desk it's going to take up a third of your desk instead of half of your desk so um, I did like though on the R8 it had the four different choices for oversampling and there was a pretty significant difference where the Pontus there was a small difference between oversampling and non oversampling but there was a lot bigger difference with the Audio GD so I did like that because it gives me more choice of what I want but uh, bottom line I have to say um, I slightly prefer the Pontus over the R8 um, like I said, very, very similar in sound. And I am giving the Pontus sort of a win here, if you want to call this a shootout. But it's a very, very small win. I mean, they were neck and neck. And it just slightly edges out the R8. So if you already have an R8, you don't need to th get rid of your R8 and go buy a Pontus. It's not going to be... A significant improvement it might be you know a slight improvement but that, that could be subjective it could be one person to another then the next person might you know prefer the R8 over the Pontus I don't know so I would say going from the R8 to the Pontus is more of a sideways step than an upgrade so if you have an R8 I would be perfectly happy with it I could live with the R8 the rest of my life uh, they're both really, really great decks. I would just say if someone offered me one or the other and said, which one would you pick? It would be a tough decision, but I'd probably pick the Pontus. Although I do already have a um, Audio GD Master 9, and this does match up really, the R8 does match up really well with the R9. The two look great sitting together and using the ACSS connections uh, that works out great so if you already have other audio GD components then I would go with the R8 but otherwise like I said giving a slight victory to the Pontus for a lot of small reasons um, no no you know definite you know advantage just um, a lot of little things add up so anyway I'm gonna leave it at that um, I'm going to wrap up this video. Once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video helped you, please give me a thumbs up. If you uh, haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. And you are all welcome to join us over at the Headphone Experience. On Facebook, we are up to 15.8 thousand members. I hope to see you all over there. And uh, once again, thanks for watching my video.